Hey everyone, in today's video, we're going to be talking about the bottom view of the binary tree. So what does the bottom view of a binary tree mean? So it basically means that when you look at the tree from here, like from the bottom, if you look at the tree, what values can you see inside the tree? Right. So from first glance, you can obviously see that you can see 5, 10, 14, 25, right? So these are the values that you can see from the, uh, if you look from, uh, from beneath the tree, right? So you need to print those values out. Right. But uh, it's not actually that simple. Right. Because if I give you uh, some uh, like a weird tree, like if I give you something like a one, two, three, four, and I give you a uh, five over here. Right. So you could prop if I ask you what what can you see at the bottom of the tree, you'd probably just tell me five and four. Right. So this is not the bottom of the tree. In this case, the bottom of the tree is actually four, three, five, and one. Okay. So this is what the bottom of the tree for this tree would be. So let me explain you how to, you know, first identify what the bottom of the tree is. Okay. Um, let me just rub this. Cool. So let's imagine you have a tree like this, right? And each tree, has a row and a column associated with it. Every node has a row and column associated with it. So let's say, let's go with this one. So this, this one has a row zero. These two have a row one associated with them. These three have a row two associated with them. And these two have a row three associated with them. Right. And for the column, Let's take the node for, for a root node. We'll take it to be as zero for a column zero, right? So what we'll do is we'll assign a column zero, right? Everything to the left of it will be assigned a value subtracting one from it, right? So if I have a column zero, everything to the left of it would be a zero minus one, right? So this is, so basically call minus one, okay? So my current column is zero for the root node. So everything to the left would be column minus one. So this would be a minus one. We're depicting it based on a number line, right? So if you have a number line like this, zero, one, two, three, minus one, minus two, minus three. If you see everything on the left is subtracted by minus one and everything to the, uh, to the right is added by plus one. Okay. So over here, eight would be assigned a column of minus one. 22 would be assigned a column of plus one. 5 would be assigned a value of column of minus 2 because minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, minus 1 is equal to minus 2, right? There would be assigned a column of minus 2. 3 would be assigned a value of 0, column of 0 because minus 1, plus 1 because it's on the right, so it will be a 0. 10 would be assigned a value of minus 1, sorry, a column of minus 1. 14 would be assigned a column of plus 1 and 25 would be assigned a column of plus 2, right? So this is how the rows and columns will be depicted for you, right? Now, when I ask you the bottom of bottom view of a tree, what I mean by that is for each column, find the node with the largest row value, right? So if I'm asking you for column zero, right? What is the node with the largest, what is the node with the largest row value in this case, right? For row zero, if you have, you only have two nodes in row zero, in column zero, that is 20 and 3. Both of them have a column of 0. But 3 has a higher row value, right? So this means that 3 would be visible from the bottom, right? So if you look at from the bottom, 3 would be a node which would be visible to us, okay? Right. Similarly, for minus 1, right? If I, uh, the number of nodes which you have for minus 1, uh, for column minus 1 are minus 8 and 10, but 10 has a lower row. Right. It has a greater row value than uh, 8, which has a row value of, mine, uh, of row value of 1. So we are going to basically print 10 in this case for uh, column minus 1. For, uh, for minus 2, it only has a value 5, so we print 5. In case of plus 1, we have 22 and 14, but row 3 has a higher value, row value, so we'll print 14. And for row two, plus 2, we have 25, so we'll print, print 20. So we'll print 25. So basically, and we go from left to right. So we print the lowest value, uh, lowest column value to the pause to the highest column value. So we'll print it in a manner of 5, 10, 3, 14, and 25. 
So this will give you the bottom view of the binary tree. Okay, or bottom view of the binary tree. So I think it's pretty much understood what we are doing over here. I'll give you one more example. I'll show you this the whole thing with one more example, what the question is. But I'll also suggest you to check out the uh, top view of a, bi a binary tree, the video, which is just before this one. Do check it out because I've explained the top view as well. It's just the reverse of it. For each column, find the node with the smallest row value. That's exactly the opposite of it. And this is for the bottom view. So I hope I do expect you to check it out first before you come to this video, right? You won't miss anything, but I just gave a bit more detailed explanation on the top view on, you know, how, what the question is. So I think you'll probably understand better what the bottom view is for this one as well. But I think this just simplifies what the question is. It's not anything major. This is what the question is. I'll explain you with one more example right now. So let's say we have like a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10, right? If you have a tree, something like this. Now, what would be the bottom view of the tree, right? So firstly, I'll assign my row and column values, right? So this will be a row column zero. This would be minus one. This would be minus two. This would be plus one, plus two, plus three, plus two, plus one, zero, minus one. Okay. And these would be my row values. This is row zero. These two are going to be row one. This is going to be row two. This is going to be row three. Row four. Row five. Row six. And row seven. Right. Now, so let's start with minus two. Right. So with column minus two, how many nodes do we have? We only have one node. So we'll print that node, right? For minus one, we have two nodes, two and 10. But which node has a higher row value? It's 10. So we'll print 10, right? For nine, for zero, for column zero, we have one and nine, right? So which one has a higher row value? It's nine. So we'll print nine. For four and eight, right? Both are a column plus one. Which column, which node has a higher row value? It's eight, which is, I think, five. So you print eight. For in case of plus two, column plus two, we have five and seven, we'll print seven. And in case of plus three, you only have six, so we'll print six. So this is the bottom view of this tree. All right. So this is what the question is, guys. I hope you understood what the question is. So let's go back. Okay, let's go to the previous page. Right. And let's try to figure out how to solve this problem now. Let me just rub all of this. Uh, yeah. So I hope you did check out my top view, uh, the qu my video on the top view of a binary tree because the code is exactly the same with just one small change in it. So it's going to be pretty much same. So let me just, you know, uh, let me just do, let me just tell you what the code is now. Okay, cool. So uh, as we did in the top view, uh, top view of a binary tree, we are going to do the exactly the same thing over here. Firstly, what we'll do is we'll try to do a level or traversal, which is not exactly level or traversal because we won't maintain an array which is going to store all the, uh, store the nodes in a particular level. But, you know, it's just a variation of it, kind of, you could say. So firstly, what we'll do is we'll store the root, right, what we have, which is 20 and the column. This is our node and this is the column. We'll store it in a queue, right? We'll store these values in a queue. Now, what we'll do is we'll create a dictionary or a hash map. So what answer is going to do, answer is going to store the node for each uh, column which has the highest row value the highest row value. Okay. So this is basically what answer is going to do. Cool. Now, 
Okay. So, yeah, this is what answer is going to do. So let's start. So what we'll first do is we'll check while queue is not empty. So while queue is not empty, we'll pop the value from queue dot pop zero, right? We'll pop the value from the queue. Now after popping, what we'll get is a node with the node 20 and the column zero. Okay, this is column and this is the node. Okay, right. So, so we'll get this as a uh, inner node, right? And we'll just break it down a bit more, simplify our process for us. So what we'll do is we'll store the value of node. So we'll store the value of node, node dot val over here in val. So basically val is gonna store 20 now and we'll store the column in call which is basically going to be, uh, so this is basically node of zero dot val. So one second, let me just rub this. Yeah, this is node of zero dot val. And this is going to be my node. Oh, uh, sorry, this is going to be my node of one, right? And also we're going to store the node in a curve value which will be node of zero, right? So this is going to store as node value. Cool. Now, what we'll do in this question is, like in what we did, uh, the major part in top few was we were checking if there was a value present in answer, right? And if, if the column value is present in answer, we were not doing anything, right? And if there wasn't anything present, we were just adding the value and, you know, maintaining the answer answer dictionary. Right. But in this case, what we'll do is we won't check it. Basically, what we'll just do is we'll take answer dot column, right? And we'll just equal it to the current call. Right. So I know the current call, uh, but the current uh, val. Okay. We'll just do this. Right. Now, I'll do a dry run, then you'll understand what's happening. Right. So now, what we'll do is we'll check if uh, cur dot left, right? If there is a value present in Q dot append, what we'll append is basically our cur dot left comma call minus one, right? As you know, because we're going to the left, we're going to do a call minus one, right? And next we'll do if cur dot right Q dot append cur dot right comma call plus one cool because we're going to the right we're doing a plus one right so let's do a dry run of whatever happening whatever is happening till now cool so firstly in the very first case when we have a 20 and okay let me take continue the color yeah in the very first case when we have a 20 and zero right we're popping it out, right? This gets popped out, right? After it's popped out, oh, sorry. Yeah, after it's popped out, what we're doing is we're keeping, storing all our values like this. So this is gonna store my 20 value. This is gonna store my column zero, and this is gonna store my node 20, right? Now what we're doing is we're maintaining our answer dictionary like this. Right, we're going to store if the column is present, not if whether it's present or not present, we're just going to change the value. If it's not present, they'll just create a value. But if it is already present, we'll just update the value. Okay, so currently nothing is present. So we'll just create a value zero, which is going to store the value 20. Right, okay. So a column zero with the value 20. But this basically means that currently from the bottom, we can see the node 20. Right. Now, if curve dot left q dot append curve dot left comma call minus one so it does have a left and it does also have a right so we'll both append both the left and right so let's just append it over here on appending what we'll get is eight and minus one and 22 and plus one okay so this is what we get right now since the so since we finished the loop we'll check whether q is empty or not it's not empty we just appended two values so now remove this this value. We have eight and minus one, 
Wait, let me rub this. Okay. So right now our value is eight, our node column is minus one, and we go uh, and we have a node eight here. Cool. Now we're checking whether it's present in a column or not. Currently it's not present. So minus one is not present. Yeah. So minus one is not present. We'll update it with eight like this. We'll check whether it has a left or and a right. It does have a left and right. So we'll add both of them. So over here, we'll add a phi with minus two and three with zero. Okay. Now we go to the next node. Right, we go to 22 and plus one. So we pop both of them out, 22 and plus one. What we'll get, let's rub this, yeah. But this will have a value 22, this will have no column plus one, and this will have a current node of 22. Okay. Now we'll check for an answer. So answer doesn't store anything, so we'll store it with 22 like this. So what the answer dictionary is currently doing is, it's basically just maintaining right now. Let, let's say we're building the tree from the start, right? We're building the tree from the top. So it's basically, let's say we added the 20th root node, right? Then we're adding the eighth node, then the 22 node, right? So it's just as in when we add the node, it's checking also. It's not literally adding the node, I'm just giving you an explanation. Let's ex imagine if it's adding the node. Uh, if it's imagining adding the node, right? Or uh, it's, or let's say not adding the node, maybe you could get confused. Let's just say the amount of the tree that is getting traversed. So let's now, this portion is traversed and these two nodes are traversed, right? So up till this point, whatever is traversed and let's say the human or whatever is gonna see the tree from this point, right? So if this much node is traversed and this is what the guy is gonna see from this point, what is he gonna see when he sees the tree from this point? When he sees the tree from this point, he's gonna see, oh shit, okay. If he sees the tree from this point, he's going to see, right, a zero with a 20, a minus one with eight, and plus one with 22, which means that we have three columns, which is a zero, minus one, and plus one, and we and eight, 20, and 22, right? So these three nodes are going to be visible from the bottom when we, up till this point, when the tree is traversed. This is what basically it means, okay? Now, since that is done, let's go to the next point. Just cut all this, yeah. Now... This is done. So let's pop this node out. After popping this node out, we have a five, we have a minus two, and we have a node five. Okay. We're gonna append it because minus two is not present. So this is gonna be a five, right? And we're gonna see for its left and right, whether it has a left or right. So five doesn't have anything. So if we won't append anything right now, right? In the next case, we remove three and zero. Now, when we remove three and zero, so this is three, we have column zero and we have node three, okay? What we'll do is we'll check whether the column has the value three or not. So currently, what I told you before that, if there's a value already present, it's just gonna update it. So this 20 will get removed and this three will get updated over here in the dictionary. What this, again, okay, so what this means is that up till this point, like these, this node, these two nodes, and these two nodes getting traversed, we see that up till this point, you know, this is going to be the bottom view of the tree, 3, 8, 22, and 5, right? So 3, 8, 22, and 5, okay? This is going to be the bottom view of the tree up till this point, up till these nodes getting traversed, okay? So the, this is going to be the bottom view. Imagine that there's no, this tree only has these many nodes, this yellow mark nodes, the bottom view is going to have these nodes. Uh, so the bottom view is going to have these nodes, 3, 8, 22, and 20, uh, 22 and 5. All right. And zero, 3 is the row which has, a 3 is in the row which has a greater value than 20. So that's why 3 is going to be visible from the bottom. Okay. All right. Now let's move on. So we'll see if it has a left value and a right value. So 3 has a left and a right. So what we'll do is we'll just append 10 with a minus 1 and 14 with a plus one, right? Now, since the loop, uh, since we come out of the queue, so we don't come out of the queue, since the uh, the iteration is complete, what we do is we check for the next value. We see that the next value is present. We cut, remove this, and we update this to 10 
minus 1 and node of 10 right now we see that does minus 1 exist minus 1 does exist in the answer array right which means that we need to update this so this value is going to get updated to 10 right so this means that since all up till this point when these nodes are uh, traversed this is going to be the bottom view of the tree 3 10 22 and 5 and 10 is going to be present because 10 has a row value greater than 8 okay now right we check for the left and right we don't have anything right so we go to the next node okay so we go to the next node okay i think i missed something out so when i traverse 22 i forgot to add 25 and plus 2 in this case so 25 and plus 2 i was forgot to add them all right right so they were also added and i think it's pretty obvious what's happening over here now let's just uh, you know finish the answer already. so we have a plus 2 with a value of 25 and we'll have finally a value of plus 1 with 14 when these two nodes get popped out okay so this will basically be the final answer array that you guys get so this basically means that these are all the nodes that uh, when all these nodes are traversed all these nodes are traversed this is the, this is going to be the bottom view of the tree that's visible to you right now what do you do what you need to do next here is basically just you know sort these key values right because you need the output in a fashion of from lowest to greatest it's going to be minus 2 minus 1 0 plus 1 plus 2 so you need to sort the values right so what we're going to do over here now after this point is when you come out of the loop we'll take all the key values for i in uh, answer dot keys right we'll store all the values in a key array so key dot append i so what key is going to store now is basically on traversing all of them we'll store 0 minus 1 plus 1 minus 2 and plus 2 right so we get this so what we're going to do is we're going to sort them out so key dot sort on sorting them the key values would be like this minus 2 minus 1 0 plus 1 plus 2 right on sorting them you get this value and finally what we'll do is we'll keep a result array and we're going to loop through the list loop through this key list so for i and key right and we'll finally just append the values in res so res dot append answer of i answer of i and finally on doing that our final res output would be equal to minus just 5 5 10 3 14 25 so 5 10 3 14 25 so this would be the final output okay all right guys i hope you understood what i did in this uh in this problem over here guys so i'll just give you demonstrate code demonstration as well so this is what the code is guys so we created the root q over here with root and its column value we have answer dictionary we popped the value out uh while uh, you know while traveling through the queue we're gonna you know uh check if uh, we're gonna check we're just gonna you know update the answer with the column value uh, present and we'll just check for its left and right and then obviously we'll keep maintain a keys value right we'll append the keys we'll sort them and after looping through it we'll just add all the values and return a so this will practically give you the bottom view of the binary tree all right so let's just submit this guys so it is submitted so yeah guys this is for that's all for the video and the time complexity of the program is going to be n log n because we're sorting the keys and the space complexity is going to be the maximum you know height of the tree is going to be o of h or basically the height of the tree yeah so there's going to be space complexity of the code because we're maintaining a queue and an answer dictionary as well so yeah guys that's all for today's video if you like the video do like share and subscribe let me in the comments what you like about the video and what i could do better to teach you guys the concepts uh, there's a 10% uh, discount coupon code on a, a Geeks for Geeks course. 
I've mentioned it on the description. Do check it out if you guys would want to buy that course. It's a self-paced DSA Python course uh, taught by them. So if you want to check it out, you'll get a 10% dis uh, discount from my coupon code as well. You can check it out below in the description. And yeah, guys, that's all for this video. If you like the video, uh, do like, share, and subscribe as well. And yeah, thanks for watching.